So both mum and dad were born in Samoa. We have mum who's a full Samoan and dad who's half German, half Samoan. I, on the other hand, was born here and have a fusion now, but I consider myself a Kiwi-born Samoan German. I first became interested in music from a very young age, maybe even about three. I do remember a piano was sent over from my great-grandmother in Germany. This piano here. The piano came about when, about 1988, so I was three. Story goes it turned up in a crate, unknown to mum and dad. So they opened it and there was a piano right there. And so what on earth are we going to do? And so they brought it into the house and I would hop onto that piano as a toy and I would just clench my fist and start making sounds. And so I think I was just drawn by the sound of the instrument. Just looking at the piano, the way that it's put together, definitely reminds me of the European heritage. Um, and it's humbling to know that I have ancestors in that part of the world. So the first picture I have is that of the great-grandmother. She lived in a um, city called Wiesbaden in Germany. And this photo here is um, there's a group of them of when the piano was finally sent over to our home. Eventually, in the mid-90s, Oma, as we would call her, she made her way over to New Zealand. Dad went and brought her, and she spent her last years with us, living in our home. And so that's us, and of course, any time anybody would come over, I'd be on the piano, making music. Ludwig, go and play us a piece of music. So I would, you know. That was a good thing that I enjoyed doing it, otherwise it would have been a real chore. So the piano from Germany has now been demoted into a lower <laughs> part of the house. There's a reason for that. Uh, we had a smaller house uh, in Upper Heart Central. Ludwig changed a teacher, and she came and listened to the piano, and after Ludwig performed, she said, get rid of it. We ended up buying this house where we are now to accommodate the grand piano. So I went through a series of exams from the age of five up until about the age of 17. And at the University of Auckland, I studied there for five years. But then directly after that, I decided, right, I'll continue my studies and I made my way to Florida State University. So all in all, you have about nine years of, of tertiary study in there. I'd never seen myself as a teacher. I'd always seen myself as a performer, as a chamber musician, as a collaborator. Um, but it's the best move. It's the best move because this is where I come from, Upper Hutt, and I want to try my very best to work with the students here of Upper Hutt, um, Low Hutt and also the Wellington region. So I run a small studio um, out of home. I've got about 10 students, which is plenty. That provides me with time to practice and prepare for upcoming concerts. Hey guys, come on in. Pacific Island culture, we're a land of storytellers and orators, meaning there's nothing written on paper. And so a lot of these kids, they said, oh, our friends can play this and this. They heard it on the radio and said, yeah, that's cool. It's nice to be able to play it by ear. Um, but in order to really advance in anything, you need to learn how to read. And so that's what we're doing at the moment. One, two, three, four. Nice. And then G, up there, on the pinky. Yeah, see, that's perfect, right? I'm still a performer. Um, this year, the project that I'm working on is music of Haydn and Beethoven. But in preparation for that, I do a lot of house concerts. So I'm talking, people will gather around someone's home, I turn up, and I talk about the music and we do a concert, like they used to do in the 19th century. I've invited my students and also their parents to come and watch Beethoven. He wrote some wonderful piano pieces that showed off his skill to be able to improvise. And one of the pieces was this piece here, and it's opus two, number three, in C major. And what I love most about it is you can hear characters that perhaps are a little timid, a little quiet, and then all of a sudden it just breaks out into huge symphonic sound. And so I'd like to play that to you. And so this is the first movement from Opus 2, number 3, in C major, written by Beethoven.
The world of solo piano is quite lonely because you're out there on the stage and you're completely exposed. And so a lot of the practice that you need to do is reflective, is very technical, is regimented. And so having the Samoan side as well, I feel, has given me that, that piece of calm and that humour, you know, to look back when situations are a little tough um, and laugh at it. I will always be involved in this business of music making and music teaching. I guess as long as I can be constantly um, on the stage performing music, speaking about music and sharing music with students who are willing to learn and that are excited about the concept of classical music, I think I'm in good hands. So fingers crossed and fingers on the piano, we'll see where it takes me.